Pepsi Bounce. Now go get Pepsi for the Pepsi Bounce. More bounce to the ounce, more bounce to the ounce. Go get Pepsi for the Pepsi Bounce. Then why take less when Pepsi's best? More bounce to the ounce with Pepsi. Ooh, my Pepsi. Popularity? That's what Pepsi's got most of. Pepsi gives more fun, more bounce to the ounce, and more for your money, too. Wherever the crowd gathers, you're sure to find Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi's best? Buy Pepsi by the cotton. General Mills presents June and Stu Irwin in Trouble with Father. Loves me, loves me not. She loves me, loves me. Hi, Drexel. Oh, hi, Randy. She loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, she loves me not. Who? Who loves you? How should I know? You know, I wish somebody would love me. Somebody will. It takes all kinds of women to make a world. What word? Sure, when I get the cord in. Hey, who are you taking to dance Saturday? Joyce Irwin. Joyce? Uh, oh, what a beauty. You asked her yet? Nope. Well, if you're going to take her to dance, how come you haven't asked her before? No sense to it. Well, you sure got a lot of nerve. You know, when, when I want to take a girl to dance, I'll ask her a oh, month ahead of time. So, <laughs> she doesn't want to go, I can ask a couple dozen more. Well, that's because you don't understand women, son. You got to keep them guessing right up to the last minute. No kidding? Sure. Women are peculiar people. Once they feel they can depend on you, then they're not interested anymore. So, you got to be completely undependable. Yeah, I guess so. When are you going to ask her? Tonight. I'll call her up seven and act as if it just occurred to me to ask her out. And casual, see. Very, very casual. As if it didn't mean much to me one way or the other. Yeah, but what if she doesn't want to go with you? I'll kill myself. Did you get the desired information? And how? Come on, Harold, let's go. Where to? Over to the Parsons' house. I'll probably have to do some mind reading over there. We'll return to the Irwins in just a moment. The efforts of Martha Berry, herself a southerner who was born in 1866 near Rome, Georgia, on the Berry family estate where she grew up. After going up north to a finishing school in Baltimore, Martha Berry returned to Georgia and to the comfortable life of a wealthy young southern girl. It is at this point that our story opens in 1887 on the porch of the stately white-pillared Berry Mansion on the day of the annual barbecue. <laughs> and now I have something extra special to announce. Martha's promised to accompany me to the Peachtree Cotillion. Well, Martha, that's wonderful news. Well, Bradford, I guess all the rest of you boys better go out and shoot yourselves. Martha's lost to you. When's the wedding, ma'am? What wedding? Oh, Wesley asked me to the Cotillion. I accepted. Does that mean I have to marry him? Oh, wait, Martha. <laughs> I shan't be here long enough to marry anyone. Shan't be here? Where are you going? Haven't you surely, been away now? Surely you've given up the idea of going to New York, Martha. Why, well, dear, your papa'd roll over in his grave being and Martha would spend his money up. No, I don't intend to spend any of papa's money. I'm going to work. Work? Oh. Yeah, what? <laughs> I don't know. Thought something to teach in school. Anything to make myself useful. <laughs> I am an emancipated woman. Oh. The only emancipated woman I ever knew lived in a side street in Memphis. Well, Bradford, that <laughs> remark's not very proper. Martha? Where Reverend is? Would you really consider becoming a teacher? This country needs teachers. Yes, I believe I would. In a fashionable girl's school. And what makes you think you have any talent for teaching? Well, my last year in Baltimore, I taught a whole class of little girls. I've never been so happy nor felt so powerful in my whole life. It's wonderful showing people the way. I can help humanity. I know it. Mm, that's admirable. If a little high for Luton. 
You know, right here in the mountains of Georgia, there are several poor souls who'd be satisfied with learning the alphabet. The hill people, they don't want education. What a waste of my time that would be. They're a segment of humanity, my dear. Yes, but not a segment I want to have anything to do with. Proud and ignorant, and particularly proud of their ignorance. Oh, oh no! Say, what are you doing here? Have you been stealing something here? Let me look. Don't do that, did you? Let her go, Bradford. Oh, ma'am, little Let devil. Let her go. My name is Martha Berry. What's yours? Martha, what in Sam Wesley, Hill? won't you tell me your name? Just as a friendly gesture. Ingaby. Ingaby Carpenter. And I ain't done nothing to be ashamed of. I don't believe you have. What, what were you doing here? Nothing. Just looking, listening, pleasuring my eyes with all the fine dresses you has got on. I'm here in the fiddling. I'm waiting for a chance to get your hands on family silver, hmm? Please, um, I wouldn't know what to do with it if I took it. We got no need for silver. Bad man, a little thing. I think you're a fool, dear. You're not to search this child. You can search me if you want. Even that's not bad manners. Well, I declare. Dear, we're driving this little girl home. Let me go with you. There's no telling what'll happen to you in the mountains. If an I'm safe there, so is a lady. She's bigger than I am. There, you see? Come along. Uh, Martha? Yes? Uh, may I speak with you for a moment? Certainly, Ralph. You've won the child's confidence with remarks. You know, folks, food prices being what they are these days, it's extra important that we give our families the healthiest foods. And that's why... I minute... get in there and talk to the judge or something. I might be able to get you in. But don't you trouble your head about it now one little bit. <laughs> what kind of sheep bang you reckon they're running in there? Must be city folks, mostly. These about the only people in outlaw possible, hunting. Now, don't you take it too much to heart, Rip. Of course, I would like to go down that golden street. There's a lot of people I hoped I'd see again. But I ain't going to leave you. No, sir, they can just sit in there tooting on their harps or whatever they does for relaxation. But you and me are going to stay together just like we did when we was traveling down below. Got it? I'm looking for a Mr. Hyder Simpson and a hound dog named Ray. Oh, that's us, son. Uh, I figured it was. Uh, well, if you and Rip's all set, we might as well be moseying along. Moseying where? In heaven, Mr. Simpson. Now, like I was telling that fella, I ain't going to sit foot in heaven without Rip. Oh, you didn't get messed up with nobody in there, did you? That fella there behind the gate. He wouldn't let Rip in, so I didn't go in. Well, that'd be just a place of hell without Rip. <laughs> you ain't far from wrong, Mr. Simpson. That is hell. Heaven's on down the road there, Pete. Good evening. This is Ed Hurley speaking for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the world's favorite cheese, who, starting this week, bring you two fine plays each week all year long on the Kraft Television Theater. Harry, what's this about Jim Cooper? Ross Kirk reported him for cheating. Oh, I see. Where are they now? In the next room. Oh, we'd better get them in here. 
Ross? Yeah. Sit down, Ross. Jim Cooper. Stand him. I'll knock this thing around a little bit and find out what happened. We're the honor committee, isn't it, Jim? It's up to us to run the school's honor system. You've been reported to us for having cheated in the finals. That's all I know so far now. Begin at the beginning and find out what oh, the truth is. Uh, Matt, there's no need to go through the whole thing. I cheated, and I admit it. In what? A biology exam. How? Oh. Three weeks ago, I was... Well, I lost my assignment sheet. And I was in the mimeographing room looking for an extra one, and I found this bad copy of a final exam that had been thrown away. Where did you find it? In the wastebasket. How did you happen to be looking in the wastebasket? Like I told you, and I, I thought it was a sign. Just you. decide to rummage around the wastebasket to see what you could turn up, huh? No, no. I All right, it, it doesn't matter sign. where you found it. What did you do with it? I didn't know what it was at first. And I just started reading it, and by the time I realized what it was, I had read uh, most of it anyway, and, well, I took it with me. Back to your room? Yes. You look at it again? Yes, as long as I had it. You sure it to anyone else? No. You sure? I'm sure. Well, look, Jim, if you showed it to anyone else, you're on your honor to tell us who they are. No, I, I told you I didn't. Was it the same exam that we used on the finals? Yeah, yes, it was. Jim, you have thrown the exam away when you realized what you were reading and told the instructor have made out a new yeah, one I for know, you? I know, I should have done that. I Wait, the thing about it is, I, I didn't really need to cheat. Well, even if I had flunked my final exam, I'd still had enough, high enough average to get through. I, I don't know why I did that. It just happened. Hey, Ross, how you happen to find out about it? On the cop. Tonight we present the 341st play in this series, A Long Time Till Dawn, by Rod Serling. Hey, Pop! I gave you a fine dollar bill! What? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Where could she have gone, Papa? Where? Drink, drink your coffee. Do you want another sandwich? Well, I just want to know where Barbie is. That's all I want to know. So drink your coffee. Get something hot inside you. Well, I, I can't figure it. You know, I wrote her this morning. I was getting out. So I got here and I went up to the place. And the landlady says, she's moved out. So... Uh, I don't... Pop, I've been waiting six months for this. Was... Was prison bad, No, Julie? no, I, it was being away from Barbie. That, see, that was a tough part. I wrote her. I was getting out this morning. Yeah, did she say anything to you? What'd she say? That she was leaving. Where? Did you say where? No. She didn't say. You know, I could take prison. You learn how to take it. You work it like a... Like a pattern. So many hours, so many feet across the cell, so many bricks up a wall, and you just count and count and count and count and count. 
Boy, you just can't count. I figure, see, it's just one rent. I'd get out, I'll come back next door, and Barbie'd be here. But Barbie wasn't happy, Joe. It was for her like prison, too. She would come over and talk until late at night. <laughs> so many nights and so many tears. by Chrysler, the name that makes news in watch bands. How would you explain a sudden, overpowering, unnatural urge to destroy everything you love? Learn the answer tonight when Tales of Tomorrow presents The Evil Within, starring Margaret Phillips. Hello. You know how clever you feel when you transform a simple outfit into a high fashion costume? Sure, try it again. You know, I think maybe this time. No, listen. no, look, let's face it. Let's face it. This thing has set us back months and years and days. Did you call me last night? Yes. You did? Yes, just like we planned. That's strange, because Annie said that. You didn't call. No. She sounded strange, upset. When you told me she broke the test tubes... I don't understand. Morning. I don't... See, Ralph... Annie has never lied to me before. Well, maybe she forgot. Maybe. Maybe, 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 you huh? Well... Oh, well, do you mind if I, uh... If I work a little bit? No, go ahead. Look, I'm going to go home, and if anything happens, you call me. Huh? Peter, you're home early again. New earrings. I treated myself. I hope you don't mind. What happened with the lad today? Oh, Peter, don't look so unhappy. Life is going to be so much better from now. Oh, I almost forgot. I had to make a phone call. The phone working all right? Fine. What? Because Ralph said he called and you said he didn't. Oh, of course he'd say that. He was supposed to call, wasn't he? Tell me more about what happened last night. I want to know more about what happened last night. Oh, such curiosity about me all of a sudden. Well, I took a bath no, come and on, I washed my head. No, come on, you know what I mean now. Autumn has come to a wide stretch of land and to the cities across the great expanse of the United States. Autumn is the time of things ending and of fulfillment. 
If you're a farmer, autumn is for a time of harvest, of fruition, of reward for the long year's work. That is, autumn should be your time of reward. Well, here's the sun, here's Paul, and here's the girl. Oh, Paul, stop it. It's too hot. Oh, Paul. Oh, Paul, don't tickle me. Paul, I said, don't tickle me. I don't like it. <laughs> Oh, yes, your royal highness, Queen Arlene. Oh, Paul. Now, Paul, I don't like you to do things like that or say things like that to me. Okay. It's everything I do annoys you. I guess you'll be glad to get back to that big city pretty soon. Paul. You know I'll miss you. Well, I hope so, honey. I'm going to be there for long anyway. I wonder. I bet you still haven't told your father yet that you're leaving. No, no, I told you. I'm going to tell him as soon as, as soon as the harvest's over. And when is that? Well, we're going to, we're going to start cutting this afternoon. And uh, we ought to have it cleaned up, oh, a couple of days. If, if you'd have seen how hard it hit Dad, you know, when the brothers pulled out. Very bad. Oh, Paul. Your father must know by now that you hate farming. He must know that you, that you want to do something else. Yeah. Well, he thinks farming is probably the most important thing in the world. But it's not for you. Mm. Or so you say. What is it, Paul? I don't know. I sure don't like the looks of those clouds. Oh, don't tell me it's going to rain and spoil our afternoon. I think you better scoot for the cabin. Looks like it's coming on pretty fast. Aren't you coming with me? No, I can't. I got to go home. Why? Well, because you just... Well... <laughs> Look, I got to go. That's all. I'll see you. Goodbye. So far, it looks as though Grant might be right. However, there's another side.